Hello, everybody, and welcome to How to Run Chapters 1 and 2 of Fandelver and Below, The Shattered Obelisk. I'm your Dungeon Master Kelly. I use he and him, and I am excited to be talking about The Shattered Obelisk. The green screen takes it out, but I guarantee it's here. Uh, the Shattered Obelisk today on Dork Hills. We're going to be going over chapter one and two because I looked down and was like, oh, we're in chapter three. Wait, we do how to runs, and these, but we blurred through these super quick. Uh, so for those of you who are getting into this module for the first time, this is going to be a... Um, uh, it's going to have spoilers for chapters one and two, but no ch spoilers that persist beyond there. Please don't put any spoilers in the chat if you're playing or if you're watching along live because the players have not read the book um, and do not know what is coming. I will say that if you are running this yourself, chapters one, two, three, and four are Lost Mine of Fandelver and then five through eight, because there's only eight chapters in this whole book, which is why I was wigged out by the fact we're already on chapter three is uh, the rest of it, the Shattered Obelisk, more, more or less. And all of that fun stuff, which uh, probably informs the design of the book for some reason. Um, all right, so we're going to be getting into stuff. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the chat. We're also going to be pulling things from YouTube, Instagram, and everybody everywhere else on our socials. Uh, so we've only got a couple of questions right now, but I've got a couple of rants I have to do, and I'm sure the players do too. Let's meet them, starting with Christine. Hello, I'm Christine. I use she and her pronouns. And normally tonight I am playing Lady Alessandra, um, Celeste Martin Barroquel, uh, who is our ASMR Paladin Oath of the Watchers. Hey, I did that from memory without having my character sheet in front of me. <laughs> and watch tomorrow you're going to mess up Malia somehow. Well, yeah. You nailed this one. The character you've been playing for four and a half years, you're going you're gonna to trip over. That's just the way it works. Um, over in the corner, we've got Caitlin. Hello, I'm Caitlin. I use she, her pronouns, and so does the character I usually play, Anthea Briarfoot, the halfling Artem Artem whoa, Artemiser, Artemiser, Artificer Alchemist of the group. So there we go. You did that perfectly, and I tripped over the easiest little words in my vocabulary. I don't think that's okay. artificers, and you must have a hell of a vocabulary if that's one of the easy ones. <laughs> anyway, welcome. Um, <laughs> down beneath you, we've got Amy. <laughs> Hello, that's me. Hi, I am present. Uh, I uh, usually play Lyric, the Tiefling Bard, College of Creation. Nice. Who do you play tonight? Uh, currently, I'm playing myself. Oh, good. That's one of my favorite characters. Oh, awesome. Aww. Uh, that's cool also, one of my favorite characters next to you is Krista. Hello, I'm Krista. I use she, they, or her them pronouns. Uh, and uh, normally I play Carmilla Alazarin, uh, our Dampier uh, battle master fighter. I almost said beast master, and I was like, that's a barbarian or a ranger. I also got my flu shot and my fourth COVID booster today. So if I'm a little out of it, I apologize. <laughs> Fair. I'm getting my, my booster tomorrow. So uh, wish me luck. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, all right and finally last but not least over in the corner it is chris i'm just like smiling blankly i'm like oh everyone else is having such a good conversation everyone's done their great introductions hi i'm chris i use here their pronouns i am usually playing sindri our uh way of the, As the ascendant dragon monk uh first time playing a monk so i'm really enjoying that in like a actually a long-term uh game so i play like so this is my first time really getting into it. And as it's going on, I'm really enjoying the mechanics of it. Nice. Uh, so tonight, folks, we are going to be talking about chapters one and two, of course. Uh, we're going to break them down kind of in order. So um, I'm going to do a round robin to the beginning of this and ask. Uh, so chapters one and two, of course, cover the travel to Fandolin. And then chapter two covers you're in Fandolin, you fight the red brands, and then you go spider and then have to go after the spider. Um, opinions. What do you think so far? That good, huh? I was. Uh, I want to know how we're gonna do. The, do we want to do an order? Like, just just put your do an order. Just put your <laughs> hand up. Put your hand up. We'll popcorn it. Who wants to go first? Who's got an sure. opinion? All right, Christine. What's your strong <laughs> um, opinion? I don't know. I I enjoyed it. Um, it was kind of a fun traditional little like entry point for like a D and D game. Um. So I I kind of. It was it was too it was a little hard. <laughs> I didn't enjoy dying multiple times. 
Um, but overall, I kind of like the idea, and it feels like it's seeded enough to be kind of interested. It did feel like a lot of, um, all right, one more thing to add to the quest log, one more thing to add to the quest log, one more thing to add to the quest log. Do you, do you kind of miss Isaac's quest log notebook from Witchlight? <laughs> Right. A little um, bit. Now, for for those of you who don't know, this book is half Lost Mind of Fandelver, which used to be the starter set module. So n knowing that, does that feel about right? This feels like a starter module. Honestly, it feels too hard. <laughs> kind of, right? A little bit. I'm like, this was an introduction to D&D &D for people who didn't know how to play. I mean, I guess my constitution was deliberately low, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the thing back in the day, though. It was kind of like... It was more of war games, right? It was more yeah. about building to fight. Meat but yeah, it does feel simple enough for that. Like, it's a fairly simple concept, fairly simple, like, execution of, go here, mm -hmm. something happens, figure this part out, a little get video there. Game? Oh no, let's, fi let's figure out how to rescue this person. But, I mean, that's fun too. It doesn't have to be super intriguey. Fair. Um, Amy. Um, so you, you said it was, it was pretty simple. Um, but I found that with all the different NPCs that were shoehorning in information, mm -hmm. keeping track of it was kind of hard. And that's with me writing down what was being told to other characters to figure out who knew what, when, where, why, and having to make notes being like, I don't know this information, but we need this information recorded somewhere or like going to approach a little old lady who's knitting to be like cool can i learn how to knit and they're just like let me tell you my life story and i'm like okay well you've made this can, too real I but also teach you how to knit, but i need you to rescue my cat from these goblins kind of yeah um and then not having a clear concept of where things were the geographic distance like think like the logistics of it just felt a little overwhelming to me okay that's that's interesting. And please let me know at any time here because I'm I'm a DM. I I'm not fallible though. So if this is a user error, that's something that I could have done better. Let me know because that'll help me run better in the future. Um, Caitlin, oh my god! I just wanted to of... clarify that I meant simple in that <laughs> you're doing something. You got hired for something, and then something happened, and then you had to go follow up that sort of simple instead like, of like, like video, video fancy game. carnival type stuff. Gamified. I okay. really like I thought it felt very comfortable like not like it was hard and like uh Sidri, fu uh, Sidri fucking died so that was cool uh thank you for the rescue there uh but like Everybody the style pulled. of is it was very very comfortable I guess that like having played a bunch of introductory modules or con games uh it it's very like yeah let's get going um but I think the other thing that made it feel so comfortable is playing with friends of mine uh and Chris, this is our first game together but like playing with like a group that we've like as we have been playing together for a long time we got a chance to develop our new characters really quickly and develop those bonds very intensely and i'm like oh yes okay we're advent i'm adventuring with my friends and we're gonna do the D, D stuff it felt it felt very D, &D in like a, in a very good way nice i could agree with that yeah caitlin what do you think um, I think that we are, so I think it's a, a good starter one, like everyone has said in the sense that yes, there's this fetch quest, there's or this quest, this quest, why can't I hold all these side quests? Mm -hmm. But also, um, I think the way that we're playing it is a bit, if people were playing this around the table for their first kind of game, getting into D&D, &D, I would think that they would be a bit more meta with it so because we're because we have a map we like as people can find a map however our characters don't they don't know where we're going yes precisely like the dm would probably put that out on the table for you mm. but the characters we're like oh, i don't know how to get there we have to find someone who can help us get there because we don't know where we're going we don't know anything about this um so i think that in some way has kind of changed the way that we're playing it for a whole bunch of um for a whole bunch of uh how other people would play it sorry i got really distracted all of a sudden totally um but yeah that was my point <laughs> i think we're being less meta because we're also um 
doing it for everyone else performing yes and yes exactly all right krista that means the final player word falls on you (laughs) oh no uh be poignant so (laughs) so my only experience with lost minds is from the adventure zone uh them using it as their sort of opening uh for their their first very small part of their campaign um so like i was vaguely familiar uh with sort of the first like chapter i guess um because they didn't get to to do all the weird side quests so i had no idea what to expect from that um and yeah i don't I, like I agree where it's it's like it's just too many things and that was the kind of thing I was like this I under I understood maybe like taking out the red brands but I also understood dealing with like going to find Gundren and I think it, it, it I think we talked about it in the game where it's like a lot of hurry up and wait like like hurry up but don't actually it's fine do all these other things first yeah i think the one of the big disadvantages of the way this module is set up is is the hurry up and wait particularly involving a hostage situation because there are fantasy game distances involved it's not like somewhere in the next like five miles there's a you know there's a hidden entrance to this fortress and that's where they're kept it's no somewhere over the next like hundred miles of wilderness there is a small castle that no one remembers apparently somewhere exactly and you have to basically do like you have to go over like you're mowing a lawn you know like in the in the grid to find it and it's like that's a bit much um but at the same point and there's a bunch of things Mm. thrown in as well that are like well there's like eight different leads but they're all in different directions it's okay well do you go try to find his brothers okay well if you do where are they they're usually over here but where's that and then there's this druid and it's like oh well, maybe we need to go ask the druid for help okay well but they're in the complete opposite direction to any of these other things and now you're telling us to go find a hag but does that actually help us like yeah exactly it- <laughs> is overwhelming but then you have to catch a lift with the witch-like carnival over to meet tiamat who's actually takasis who needs your help and you're like okay let's exactly so before we dive into this so the structure of this why don't we talk about i'll give a quick outline of how chapter one is written in the book if you have ran lost mind of fandelver before here's what i have to tell you it is almost identical i held them side by side and aside from at one point you get a lot more silver in this book from one treasure drop, I could find almost nothing different. I think it's like you got an extra like 200 silver or something like that inside of a chest. And normally it was like, you get 20 silver and they just added a zero, right? To to give you a little more cash. It's pretty much like verbatim the same, aside from the places where they're like, in chapter four, you'll see this means this. Or, or a couple of mentions about weird goblins that might come back later. So, Chapter one basically covers from you heading out of Neverwinter. The whole thing is that for whatever reason, your characters have been hired to transport a wagon from the city of Neverwinter south along the Tribor Trail to a small town of Phandalin in the area known as Phandelver. Uh, along the way, you discover that your good friend Gundren Rockseeker has been captured as well as his friend Sealdar Hallwinter. You have to go rescue them from a goblin encampment, and this is where the trouble begins. You take care of the goblins, and that is the end of chapter one. There are a number of things that you can do here. The game gives you a bunch of adventure hooks based on backgrounds, based on just generalized uh, plot threads. So besides the background, there's the one uh, where it's like, oh, um you are hired to be a uh you're hired to be a guard for this caravan wagon more than anything uh you're a friend of the harpers or you're a trainee to the order of the gauntlet and you're there to do to get squired basically by um uh, you none of you took that but um you would have been seeking out uh darren uh darren elder math the orchard guy to train you because he used to be a member of that order and he would be your your mentor So there's a lot of things in the town that are really cozy, like Chris was saying. You go there, um, there are a lot of places for backgrounds to kind of loop in and for people to go, oh, yes, I have a connection to this guy. Or, oh, you know, that that guy that sounds kind of like Cookie Puss is my is my uncle, you know, Um, that's really cool. 
And I really like that. It reminds me of, um, as a as a Pathfinder player from first edition, it reminds me a lot of, I think it's Cookie Puss, Snaggletooth? They're the same character. <laughs> Snaggletooth. you were talking you were about. Half half. Oh, Snagglepuss. <laughs> Who's Cookie Puss? There's a Cookie Puss. I know there's a Cookie <laughs> Google, there's someone, a couple Google of them. someone Google it. Someone nope. Google it, not me. Uh, Do not Google that. that. <laughs> no, I don't want to sully my Google with that. Come on, save so your Google's already me. sullied. Okay. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. Um, this reminds me of Sandpoint a lot. Like Fan Fandolin reminds me of Sandpoint. Mm -hmm. If you know Pathfinder First Edition, Sandpoint is my hometown. I love it. I don't know why they built it where they built it, but I love it. Um, and that is chapter one. So chapter one starts with you finding stuff. There's an encounter with some goblins that are ambushing you. And here is where the problem begins, in my opinion. Uh, my my one minute summary from a DM perspective of this chapter is the goblin ambush is really cool. Starts things off in media res. You're like, oh, hey, there's a thing. What? Oh, no. These goblins can actually totally mulch a level, uh, a level one party with tactics. Um, I was, I'm, I'm in a group that does DM stuff for Lost Minds of Fandelver, right? The, there's tons of Facebook groups for this that'll help you out. Uh, you can always hit me up in those to ask questions, by the way. They referenced using a book called The Monsters Know What They're Doing. It's on my shelf. It's, gr it's a great book that talks about monster battle tactics. I would not recommend using this in a game with first level players. <laughs> Because once you guys get into the Kragma hideout, if the goblins use goblin tactics, you will die by the second room. Um, so consider yeah, it's that. it's super deadly. It's like, stupid deadly. First level of D&D is like that. You're just like the chance for you getting ab getting like one one hit KO'd by senior bugbear. Uh, right? So... There were some things that I added to the module as spice to help you guys out. Number one, uh, we have something good happens. I spent one of those to have a random druid or wolf or whatever he is uh, give you good berries because you were dying. There's yeah, one. That was incredible. <laughs> I think you found one extra health potion than was present at one place. Um, because that's a really easy thing to track. It's a little boost. It doesn't hurt anything. The other big one I did, and I'm sure someone's going to comment about this eventually, is it's one of those things where you get into a combat right here outside of Kregma Castle and kill the guys, but none of the other goblins notice. And I have to justify that mentally, where I'm like, the goblins are just like, ah, the other guys didn't come back in. I guess they want to pull extra shifts. I'm not going to complain. I'm going to sleep in. You know? <laughs> like... <laughs> Use goblin brain to get around these problems. Um, Especially since we camp right outside of there too. You you oh, yeah. you you went like a mile away, but yeah, basically, yeah. it not was very it, far away, not, not far enough far away that their hunting range would not have like covered that area. But... Yeah. So um, there, it is a really deadly chapter, as we found out. the The final thing that I did is I killed Chris, and then I was like, "We just bought you art, man. We're not gonna." <laughs> <laughs> call up Kiyoshuki. Yo, Kiyo, can you make a dragon board now? <laughs> can you do that, like, real quick? And real also, Chris, she can do your costuming. Like, truly, like, figure it out. Right. Repurpose um, it. Work designers. But I also am a DM who believes that um, death is less interesting than what you can do with it. And I've got some plans for you. I've got some plans for everybody, but don't expect to be bailed out. Oh. I don't know. You see, like, like for DD, like I expect like characters will die. That is something mm. that is that can and sh should happen at points. Session one for like a, a game where you're like, okay, we've like we've done stuff to set up for this for an audience as well. Yeah. It's like this this fucking sucks. Like let's <laughs> make this work in a way that like is fun for the audience and the players. Yep, fair. Um, so hopefully that was, hopefully no one's going, oh, I should. Actually, I saw somebody comment that they really liked that I did that for you in one of the DM groups. It's been really weird, by the way. By the way, if you're on the Fandelver and Below Facebook group, uh, hi! It's been really weird because I check my Facebook sometimes and it'll, yeah, I'm a boomer that way. Um, it'll still pop up and it'll be like, hey, I've been watching the Dorktail stream of this and I'm like, someone's talking about Dorktails and I didn't post it. That's weird. <laughs> It's like when Krista got harassed in public and the, like, hey, are you with Dork Tales? Cool. And they drove off and they're like, what the hell? Robin got shouted at in her car because we got stickers. Oh, Chris, I got to get, I got to send you some magnets for your car. If you're yeah. driving. They're good. Yeah. Mine got stolen. I need to get new ones. You just got stolen? Ooh. I work at a high school. What do you expect? Uh, Maybe they're fans oh, now. Yeah. 
Maybe. Yeah, probably not. Spreading the also, good news of Dork Tales. Hopefully. From a Gurch. From a Gurch. <laughs> Take me to Gurch. All right. So, chapter one what worked and what didn't. And bonus bonus trick if you mention something that I did specifically to change it, you have to say something that worked about the module itself. So you can, you can, you can praise or, or condemn me all you want, but you still got to talk about the module. Krista, what do you um, got? I think uh, kind of, I think like what sort of, I think Chris, Chris and Christine in particular have said, where like, it's a great traditional hook. It, it gets you in, it catches you. Exactly. It's like, you know what, here's your reason you were hired. The book gives you those background choices and it really sort of sets you off of like, you don't have to be a mercenary. Like you don't have to be a specific character. There's a lot of options that give you motivation to go. So unless you're playing like, you know, you, you have your Scooby-Doo rule, right? Like, you know, yeah you can play a coward but you gotta always do the thing for two scooby snacks so yeah. i think i think unless you're playing a really crappy character there's there there isn't anyone that gets missed in that scoop to get you going fair what didn't work on side quest side quest side quest side quest side quest you mean badger <laughs> Badger badger, 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 badger. No, badger, no, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, quantum, 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 side quest, side quest, side quest. Oh, exactly. All right, <laughs> there. We our own of that. Oh, quantum, 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 quantum. Buy the quantum shirt. Side that thing's quest, great. Side quest. <laughs> Did I buy the quantum shirt? I think I have it. Actually, I think I bought it for myself. I should buy it for you, Krista. That's your Christmas present. It's the quantum shirt. All right. So what else? What else worked about this? Um, I liked how many npcs there were that were felt relatively fleshed out yeah that you like didn't gundren? feel like you had to create them you like gundren um like i like gundren well enough but i just liked that in the village that there was option to go talk to a bunch of people mm -hmm. to try and get more info but i like i agree that the downside is that there's too many side quests or they're just not very well organized yeah, they also because want to... having a few people, like a couple people, could have been like, "Oh, hey, could you go check with that guy?" And that would mm. give more, that would feel a bit more like, "Okay, that's actually something important to more than one person." Yeah, that could be a user error. I may, I could have threaded that a bit better. I think. Well, uh, that doesn't think... mean that they didn't they didn't do it. So, like, that's not necessarily like this. We're talking straight about the module here. Mm -hmm. No, and <laughs> yeah, I think that so... I think the new DMs would come up against that problem. I think you're absolutely right. So I feel like they probably could have grouped them a little bit more. And like what Chris is, and Caitlin, I think said was that th it feels like we've got this wide circle of them all around us. Like we're in the starting zone map <laughs> of like world of Warcraft. And we have our quest log <laughs> of eligible level enhancing quests <laughs> that we have to go through. And at some point we'll have done enough of them that the others will gray out because they won't give you any XP anymore. <laughs> yeah and and railroading is like you know no one likes railroading but i feel like there's a time and a place for it and this module has a lot of times and places for it nobody likes railroading unless you're completely lost and then that then it's great yeah. i think having like two to three options would mm. have been enough so that you, there's not you don't have to just go after gundren mm. you could do this one other thing or you could do this other thing and all of them would lead back in they do in the module say that there is a chance you'll just skip Kragmaw and go straight to the town and then have to be hired to go back out. So they do kind mm. of make accommodations for that, but it, yeah, it is a bit much. Caitlin, would you oh, want to I was say? just going to, oh, oh my God, I think I lost again. No, no, no. So I was just going to say that nothing seems really particularly pressing with those side quests though, because they're like, oh, there's this thing. If you can get to it, get to it. Oh, there's this thing. If you get to it, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Kind of a thing. Um, but I haven't felt, I haven't felt urgency, and I haven't felt a time frame to actually, other than finding Gundren, of course, because we're like, mm -hmm. he's a hostage. Yeah, that might he might. Um, but I couldn't figure out a way to kind of order them in in a way that makes sense for their pressing needs. Kind of. The, the entire purpose for them is to get you leveled up to go and rescue Gundren, 
right? Like that's that's oh, that's the like, meta not textual. As pressing as this. I know, I but know. It's the meta, that's know. the frustrating part, right? It's the meta textual <sighs> yeah. gameplay is that it's it's the meta game is that oh shit, you guys can't survive unless you're level four or five or whatever. <laughs> I was noticing that because what I was thinking is that none of the people here have pushed us to go rescue Gundren. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not important because they're not putting importance on it yet because we're not ready to do it. All right, um, Amy, what up? So sort of in that similar vein of, of the pressing urgency of it, um, it reminds me of like in, again, in those video game starter zones where you literally cannot continue your, it's like, this is your storyline. And so you have all the side quests. You cannot continue your storyline until you have filled up this bar of like, not experience, but like participation or something. Yeah, like you haven't fi finished your progression bar of, of or or achieved high enough uh, reputation with this town to proceed. Like that's what it feels like. Except you're just kind of there, okay. and again, like you can't really like in terms of priority, it doesn't really have a clear order, and it, yeah, fair. It kind of does. It's kind of like chapter two particularly is a mess. I don't know. Is there much to talk about about chapter one? Krista, you you had a comment. Uh, I was just going to say like a really, I feel like a really easy fix to this mm. is to find Sildar. Sildar. Sildar I always try to Hall mix it with Winter. Sindri. Uh, Sildar. I'm trying to mix um, them too. <laughs> uh sildar i feel like a quick thing is to be like yeah okay gundren went ahead and then you find sildar and sildar goes oh yeah no you got to get me to find gundren and don't learn about gundren's kidnapping until like you go in the town you go huh that's weird the gundren's not here and then everyone else starts saying like oh yeah weird uh, gundren we thought gundren was going to be here before you mm -hmm. and then there's there's mystery and then you find out and then it's like oh well we might as well wait around here for him you, until, you could and then and then you have a reason to deal with the red brands and then you could leave it in like brand. in one of the missive at the red brands is like yeah now that you have the dwarf exactly and yeah the that would even fix. Tough, there's possessions there too that they've looted stolen or something or even and that yeah, could be a reason to go and visit the druid and stuff maybe so everybody could then suggest Oh, well, maybe they could, like, do a scry for you or something or insert appropriate spell Ooh. here. You know, the really yeah. that that is a really clever idea, Krista. Anybody who's running this game, do it that way. Um, that's a really it's a really interesting way to do it. I got to say, though, the Druid Quest, Druid Quest uh, is really good. And you guys are going to really like it. Like, I'm really hyped for the Druid game next week. I'm, I'm like super hyped for it. And um, some of the side quests are pretty cool. The, the Banshee one is kind of weird and interesting. And like, they're all, they're all neat. They're all neat. I'm, I'm impressed by the side quests, but I don't like how popcorn-y they are. What's up? Well, I was, I was going to say, and I, I fully thought we weren't going after the Druid because I was like, there's no reason to go after them. Like, we need to just go fight Kragma. <laughs> but the Druid will take so you to Kragma. It's in the other direction. I'm, uh... Nah, it's literally like two blocks south. Um, <laughs> Caitlin, then Amy. I'm also really excited as a positive. I'm also really excited for all the side quests, like personally. Um, yep. Yeah. I do love me some side quests. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, like, I, think I think they'll be interesting and fun, but yeah. But I was just thinking, like, I almost think that instead of having all of them come up at the same time, having the NPCs with each one sort of show up at different points maybe or like after you've done something mm -hmm. not necessarily to trigger it but like oh if you go to like if you've gone to the deal with the red brands then maybe you'll run into the person who has information about the druids or the banshee mm -hmm. and have like to have a cap on just how many different things they're giving you Fair. Like out in one time. True. Um, I think unfortunately the, the most of the rumors come from like you show up at the tavern. Yeah, yeah. Chris. I think one way that you could try and minimize that, it would be like, if you have done X, Y will approach you. Like, because mm -hmm. like these people don't know me from a hole in the ground. And just because I have like a sword doesn't mean I'm like necessarily trustworthy. Like for like the town cleric to be like 
well, you seem like good sort. Like, and this is nothing on. <laughs> I'm like, I felt dumb yeah, doing what it, are you but I had to robbed. do it. Like, you keep getting robbed. Like, st- stop talking to adventurers all the time. Um, but they seem cool. Th- I mean, we we do seem pretty all right, but like, you're okay. Uh, I I just want to say, um, misere mouse, misery mouse. I'm not sure. Uh, in the chat had said, um, like it would be great working those side quests into backstories because mm-hmm. like like i said like the there were all these really really good well like you said too kelly like there's there's all these really good like backgrounds that give you a reason to go on this adventure mm-hmm. like tie those in like you said right like i mean like we're there to find this house and the house has some stuff and that connects us to this boy or whatever that's great mm. um and so like so yeah like we have um alessandra who's connected there but it's like okay well maybe this hag maybe one someone has a history right or maybe she's a hag that's actually known for helping the harpers and okay so now if you're friends with the harpers you have more of a reason to go find this hag and yeah i don't know it's just there there it felt like it was like ooh yes i'm fit in this world and this is where i belong and now i'm lost <laughs> fair Fair. I think um, given the the backgrounds that we had in play, I think Christine's background and Chris's just being like a hired helper of Gundren, it was probably the easiest. Like Christine's background uh, with with Ella and her her aunt being there was pretty good. I was trying to find more stuff to fit the more transient type of characters. Like Lyric has no has no particular anchoring, and like Carmilla's on a quest to stab people stab quest not true carmilla is really on a quest to not stab people and she's failing at it horribly um her quest is to follow along it, it basically it was just to follow anthea and just protect her and make sure that she gets on her feet because she wants anthea to help her with her whole curse nonsense selfish uh i don't oh, t- entirely selfish reasons it. but like but is trying to like be um not anthropomorphic uh <laughs> Trying to be a philanthropic, yeah, (laughs) philanthropic, not anthropomorphic. All right, so fair. Um, okay, so that makes sense. Uh, so when you're running the game, like try to tie it as best into the backgrounds as possible. There, that's absolutely correct. Um, it seems like we've mostly just jumped over chapter one and talked about NPCs. So, um, all I will say is just be careful because the chapter one is a real meat grinder. And, um, yeah, uh, you will die. Like Clark, the bugbear will probably mulch a low level party or just your monk. Um, and I, I, I will say for personal, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but for personal reasons, that whole everything may, mainly because of poor rolling was so mentally taxing on me. <laughs> I was I was just angry. Like I wasn't looking forward to game. I was just mad. I just didn't want to participate. And it's stupid. And I I know logically I shouldn't feel that way, but sometimes your emotions get the better of you. And that was for me personally, I was just so angry that it was just failure after failure after failure. Mm. Um and that that I was just like for me, I don't even really remember most of it because I've blocked it because <laughs> I was so frustrated. And you went into, a, into a battle rage. You're in a fugue state. You just you woke Pretty up covered much. in blood. Some of it was yours. Some of it was theirs. <laughs> exactly. And so like it is nothing against the book and nothing against anybody here. It's purely against my dice and my own mental health. <laughs> We're just having some fun with well, that once. I definitely found it frustrating with rolling poorly plus being hit really hard a lot it was just like okay one would have been okay challenge but two it kind of (laughs) sucks yeah so and i think because we didn't do uh let's how how to after chapter one i've kind of they're firmly lumped together at this point and i kind of forgot that of course the goblin stuff would have been chapter one and not chapter Mm. two when we were talking about chapter one um but like i feel like that overall was a fairly clear and easy setup the chapter one stuff yeah there get, meet the get, dude get hired go to a thing run into a thing and go oh no check the thing out fight mm, yeah. get killed 
not not to pat ourselves on the back too much but um i think the way that it was structured probably would work best for your game if you're running it which is to have a little preamble where all the characters meet each other before they're on the road um and have a little bit of camaraderie uh introduce gundren as more than just a guy that you know hired you like give him a little bit of a personality first make him friendly don't make him like don't make him a douchey like awful boss or else people just won't do it make him a nice guy who's just trying to like start a business or you know make some money and survive in the frontier right like make your characters be at least ambivalent to his survival um and you'll get a lot out of it so uh definitely do that and curd curd i invented curd <laughs> i just threw him in I've, and then Droop showed up and like Droop is better than Curd. Droop's in the book. Curd is not. Curd, Curd the is boss. literally like the the like point of of Carmilla's like personal growth at this point. Curd's in a way. It because she she pushed well at least in in, in both my mind and her mind she kind of pushed Curd into coming with us. And then, and like, can and like, got, I kind of got everybody on on the side of like, let's let's get him to help us, and and let's convince him he's better than he is to get his help, and to kind of throw him in the meat grinder, which we did. <laughs> I mean, if Carmilla hadn't noticed, I think Alessandra was fully on board that train without even anything being said. Of just like, yeah, let's convince this idiot to do it because he just about killed us just now, or he was gonna try and kill and eat us. It's so true. you know what? He can do something that's dangerous. That's Remem in like pursuit of looking after us. She didn't care. <laughs> she uh, grew up with paladins. I don't think they care about that either. So, leaving chapter one behind, and if you have any specific questions about chapter one, please let me know. But, chapter two. So chapter two, Trouble in Phandalin, uh begins when you get to Phandalin. It covers showing up, meeting 100 NPCs all in a row, getting 100 quests in a row, getting 10 more quests after that just to top it off, and uh, then realizing that none of it matters because you gotta go fight some thugs. Okay, uh, so the structure of that is there's a bunch of little side quests. You go anywhere in the town, everywhere's got a little thing that you can interact with. You can go to meet the cleric and get persuaded to help her fight a banshee. You can go to the town master's hall and uh, meet a timid but but uh, kindly leader who wants you to uh, not investigate the mercenary guild because he's afraid of getting stabbed. Um, and then eventually you will encounter the ruffians who, if you don't go after them, they'll go after you for being a bunch of people just showing up and causing good things to happen in their town. They definitely don't want that. They want to control every sword that comes into the town. And uh, you go through that, you go through the Red Brand hideout, and eventually encounter Glassstaff. Uh, however, unlike in, uh, unlike I expected, you guys made enough noise and his closet telepathically told him to get the hell out. So he ran and he actually managed to escape because of his, uh, his skeletons. Um, there is an entire section at the end of this chapter that says, uh, let, where is it? It's right here. Uh, if Glassstaff is taken into custody, uh, Sildar arranges to have the wizard incarcerated in the Townmaster's Hall until he can be brought back to Nether Neverwinter. Let your characters stand tr um, like witness for his trial. It can turn into a legal drama if you want it to. Neat. Sort of, it kind of like right it's away. a neat concept, but then you're like, "What about yeah. Gundren?" <laughs> Sorry, like Gundren, we had jury was, duty. What about Gundren? <laughs> what about right. Gundren? God. So, so that's chapter two. What do we think about chapter two? And there was a question. Uh, while you're thinking about chapter two, there was a question that was given to me on the Facebook group for this that said, um, "Let's see. There's an easy way to." There are a lot of easy ways to do this, but um, is there something fun you would suggest using doing in this section for a party of six that is level three to four instead of level one to two? I mean, the easy one is changing the monsters from goblins to hobgoblins uh, or adding tougher goblins or things like that uh, or using, you know, more tactical things. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Is there a way to make this more engaging for for people of a slightly higher level without just like cranking the stats up? Chris? Uh, like the monsters use tactics. The, like that's, I was gonna say tactics. Yeah. 
like you could make a case that the bandits around hear us when we were fighting the hobgoblins in the hallway and then we would have just been like absolutely doomed like there would have been no saving us absolutely pooped like uh but because we were able to be, have the luck and not have to fight the six additional bandits while we're fighting the hobgoblins and got that short rest off mm. uh that would have been way harder and like even level three pcs like if like if you're facing off against glass staff as well as his goons at the same time you could be in a world of hurt i'd also have the yeah. nothic be yeah. a more active antagonist because the withering gaze on a Nothic can really mess you up. Yeah, there's a lot of potential to get absolutely just uh, blended. Um, like, we've rolled really bad consistently. Like, uh, Krista, I, like, I get being frustrated by it. Like, it, it sucked, actually. Uh, but, like, occasionally, though, we rolled really well. Like, the fight with the band, the red brands out of town. You could, you could upgrade them from, like, mooks to like a little bit tougher but we also like murked them in one round right like they mm. didn't get to move before we dropped all of them yeah because yeah. you surprised them because they were playing cards and it's an old well and with that you could have them just be more on the ball more pl thinking knowing a group of adventures has moved into town we sent some guys out after them but if they're not successful we better be watching out just in case they come after us type thing mm. maybe they are tough and we need to be ready or even like the initial goblin cave, mm. instead of not having that first room hearing us, if you're noisy about the fight and don't sneak up and, and rogue stab them in the back, the ones inside here and come checking. Or within a certain period of time, they come and check. And if you're not ready for it, then mm. and maybe it... they come out cautiously because they're smarter and stuff like that. So treat it mm. like you would play it as a character yourself. What mm. would you do? If you wanted to be particularly rough with them, um, and it is obvious you are not there to join the red brands or stay neutral to them, and you're staying at an inn with an easily intimidatable um, owner, uh, there are two ways that I would suggest. One is just show up in their bedroom in the middle of the night with a knife uh, and pick one member of the party off or attempt to, uh, or burn the inn down with them in it and bar the doors, and if the family dies, the family dies. And then you create a great villain. Right? Um, like, have them show up in really intimidating places. Like, yeah, you killed a couple of our thugs. That's fine. We got 12 more. Can you fight 12 in one room? We're going to bar the doors on all of your friends, or something like that. And then, you know, or use things like Alchemist Fire. It's, it's accessible at the general store here. Like, murder people. If you really want to make it hard, play mean. If your players like that. I like the idea of, of not burn. Actually, I like the idea of burning the, 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 the inn down better because then there's a chance for heroics to go save the family. Also, big complaint. I'm going to jump in right here. Quick thing. This book is organized for crap in terms of naming NPCs. I had to check a wiki to find out what the wife's name was because it doesn't show up. Uh, sorry, the son's name doesn't show up until chapter five. And the wife's name, I don't know if it's in chapter five. I didn't see it on a quick perusal, uh, but I had to find it in a wiki. So uh, if you're going to have an innkeeper and their family, drop their names in parentheses or something. Like, just let me know so that I can't, especially if I'm running this on stream, guys. Come on. I shouldn't have to Google every family tree. I shouldn't have but to go to a third party wiki, a fan. Another wiki. note for making it difficult for higher level players. Um, there's a young child who runs around getting into mischief. That's a real easy hostage to take. <laughs> he sure thinks he's good at shit. <laughs> That's true. And then all of a sudden the villagers are going to be against you if you cause issues and don't move on. And they won't be supporting you because that's their kid at risk if you stick around type thing. The chat is asking if there was an, a glossary or index in the back, at which point I go, <laughs> hold on, I have a thing for this. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> like it's just, there's a story tracker um, and then there's some magic items. That's it. 
So that's 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 just the way role playing books are a lot of the time, especially modules. Um, it's a lot to keep track of, and people just wouldn't do that. It'd be nice if there was like a cast list of particularly NPC heavy modules, much like I think some of the old White Wolf ones did for like the White Wolf ones did that pretty consistently. Yeah, because it's like the like dramatic persona like at yeah. the beginning, and you're just like, oh, it's like players and a player playbill. That's kind of nice. That was the one thing that initially seduced me into trying to run Storm King Slender. Is they oh, did, did have they? that. Like oh, a they? lot of the big oh, cast they members, did. they had write ups all in the front. Well, then they should totally do that from now on. Uh, while Beyond the Witchlight has a section in the back for players, uh, like like playing like a bunch of the NPCs. I'm running that uh, for my in, my in person group. Oh, beautiful. Uh, and that's, that's where are super you? helpful. Uh, where are we? Uh, we are in Thither. Uh, they're, they're just meeting mm. up with Scabatha for the first time. Ooh. So. Oh God, they I can't believe how they murked Scabatha in my game. <laughs> <laughs> they just suffocated her to death. Good. Spoilers. They threw Ooh. her in a bag of holding and like tied it off. And that was like the only that was like the our first kill, I think. That was the first Didn't kill of the campaign. It, I think so. Two. Hmm? Didn't we like sleep or hold person her first and then threw her in? Yeah, something like that. I don't remember. So so something like Savage. <laughs> It was awful. I think we go... tried to. I don't know if we successfully did because she was a yeah. hag and couldn't sleep and she was, or something. She was minuscule as well, right? It was pretty rough. Yeah. Um, well, she she got big. She she did. She was oh, full she size big. when we got her. Yeah. Because right. we were planning on doing it when she was little and putting her in the bag. Uh, it's, but that's we a good episode. Like, yeah, we were watch? planning to put her whole dollhouse in the bag, yeah. but then we didn't manage. Go go watch which which uh, which light. Um. So. Uh, I'm sorry you guys didn't get to fight Glass Staff. I um, I am That's not okay. sorry, however, with some of the choices I made for role playing in that chapter, such as having because they say the closet will like tell him stuff, but I'm like, wait, so did the closet manage to leave? Maybe it's funnier if he got kind of trapped and like had been trying to run between your legs the entire time and escape, but was trying to do it all stealthy because invisibility does not mean that you can't be heard or bumped into. Right. So I think that makes it an easy way to give more information. Um, the room of bugbears was just a nightmare bouncing on the beds and stuff. Um, there are so also I'm pretty sure that one that room is what led to the greatest comment in the whole like campaign so far, which is what? Isn't that where Anthea did the just let it happen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, because I thought he was dead dead. And then he was like the one with the bugbear on it. I was like, but I thought he was dead. And then he had his like last dying words. It was like, Shh. So on on the other side of the hideout, uh, there is a bunch of traps that you guys didn't go to. There are several other uh, brigands that are over there waiting for you. And Glastaff goes through and he's like, hey, bar this door now. Yeah? And they're like, OK. And they like they I had a trap ready for you that you guys didn't didn't trigger. Just so you know. Uh, so good for you. Good for you for not triggering the traps. Um, what do you guys think of chapter two? Let's dive into it. Does anybody have anything specific? We talked a lot about NPCs. Uh, what NPCs did you like? What who did who worked for you and who didn't work for you so far? I like the drow dude. I like the drow dude. Yeah, he seemed pretty chill. Yeah. I just get to use my my British voice. It's nice. Yes, Chris. Uh, I I'm very excited for uh. The one thing I appreciated, not this isn't module related, this is just for Chris being a big fanboy of Carmilla and Al Alessandra, the dip at the bar. I was like, yeah. I, I was so stoked about that. That was like, uh, that made me super happy as a player. Uh, from NPCs, uh, I'm really, I, because like I'm a big like for Forgotten Realms Lord nerd, watching it, like running into it, I'm like, oh, the Zentrum agent in town. I'm like, oh, Oh my god! I've, Watch Chris's face in that time. Yeah, I, I, as I have an aneurysm watching it happen, just like ah, uh, <laughs> it got me. Yeah, admittedly, I loved all of our RP the most, and that was yeah. it. Was just amazing, and I just, I just enjoyed like so much of it, and just playing. The fairly sincere, naive character has been a lot of fun. And admittedly, half of my fun out of this is doing stuff specifically in a way to make Krista break. Um, because it's freaking entertaining. 
That's um, pretty interesting. I do weigh out exactly what I'm going to say. Generally, sometimes I manage it off the cuff, but most of the time I am weighing it out and like then I just drop it and watch. <laughs> Make a squirm. Anybody else work, not work? Anything else work, not work? Anything you want to call out from this chapter? Uh, can I give a special like rod and piss to the skeleton hallway? Oh god, uh, the skeleton <laughs> hallway. Oh, I hate like that hallway. <laughs> I mean, like it's a like it's a decent like role playing opportunity, but it does fucking suck. Like you you, you played <laughs> the tactics there hard. <laughs> I could. Yeah. Fuck! <laughs> well, that was, get through. Like and truly, um. That was I played. I was stupid. I was chasing. I really wanted to get to that that mage, but I'm like, oh, I'm I'm so absolutely fucked here. Like, I'm like, I've done really well once you started hitting him. Oh yeah, once I was not charmed. (laughs) See, that was incredible, though. Hey guys, I'm just on his team, man. We're friends. Um, He's cool, dude. I love Nothics. I love Nothics. They're great. That was very cool. I've never encountered one before, and that was very interesting. And I'm, st- I'm, I'm, I they still feel there's more to uncover. Like I'm still mm. very intrigued with the Nothic in general. Mm. Um, and I was very surprised that it wasn't immediately hostile to us. It is. They're they're Gollum basically, right? So they're only hostile. Yeah. Like they're super chaotic. So it's like they feed themselves what they need. And if they have an opportunity to betray you, they probably will. But there's like, eh, you know, they're opportunistic. And I love them. I was them. weighing my oath so hard in that section. Just be like, right. I feel like I should be as a paladin starting this fight, but oh, uh, we don't need it. <laughs> all, all I'll say, Caitlin, is if you ever get a chance to play Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, play a wizard. Also, if you ever play Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, play a magic user of some kind, because if you're playing... If you're playing a fighter or a barbarian, you're going to have an awful time. Ask Robin. is rough. But you like magic items that only wizards can use? Here's all of them. Right? is rough. Oh, shit. It's it's rough. You want a bunch of flying enemies and no way to reach them? It's oh, great. no. The worst. Yeah. Right? It's the worst. Um, anything else about this chapter? Jump out at anybody? So, like, uh, my, my personal advice for this is remind yourself that these people are drunk and surprisable. Um, that will make things easier at the beginning. And then um, Skeleton Hallway is unavoidable if you are running into that room. Uh, you will get boxed up and uh, at a higher level um, it, it's very easy because you just fireball the room. Truly, like getting my AoE ability, the fight after that was like the Ooh. suffering. Like, if we had seen the chest before. <laughs> See, in that moment, I really wanted to be a cleric because I could have done, like, the Word of Radiance, which affects everything in a five-foot space from you, enemy-wise, with radiant mm. damage. And it would have been so easy to just have, like, walked up and been like, oh, yeah, I can stand right there next to them without actually having to move past them at all and just go, poof, hit you all. I will say that the limitations of bards for not being able to recover their spell slots and having so few of them, but also having to long rest before you can do more bardic inspiration was a little frustrating. It goes away in a couple of levels. So you'll, you get them back on a short rest soon. I think it's like level six or eight. Can't remember off the top of my head. Um, uh, yeah, just to start off though, it's like, Oh man, like I, I'm, I'm one and done and, I got to be very careful about what spells I use. And then I sure I'm not careful about what spells I use so that I use up my spell slots like immediately. Level six. Um, yeah. So I think that this is setting up pretty well. The, um, the chapters ahead are a lot of fun. The, the Druid quest to go find the, why are we going to this Druid? Uh, I don't know. We're just going. Uh, so we can go find, uh, so we can so find the castle or the keep. So you could find the castle. Because they the forest. The... What? Yeah. It's, castle. it's castle. It's a castle forest. keep. It's a, it's a castle keep. It's a it's a white castle. I, I keep wanting to call it Tall Tree because that's a music festival on Vancouver Island. No, it's uh, Thunder Tree here. You got to go to Thunder, Thunder Tree. Tree, which is actually a cooler name for a for a festival. 
Yeah. Man, I go, I go take my car to Port Renfrew and pitch like camp in the woods for Tall Tree. Drink right, some fat go, tugs go and other tree. local beer. Other so IPAs. Because <laughs> that's all they fucking make. Indolent fa- er, No. Yeah. <laughs> Independent Fandelver Ale. Um, so there is a lot of stuff coming up that I'm really excited about. I think the thing I'm most excited about with is in this module, at least the beginning, because it is very bare bones with a lot of the, compared to a lot of other modules that are being ran, this is less immediately flavorful. So I feel that against a module like Wild Beyond the Witchlight, which has an immediate carnival and fey theme, you're getting a lot of like that motif and mood. Um, in in uh, Sunday, we ran the first episode of Planescape, which was a mood. Like that immediately is a, oh, this is awful. Like fun, but awful for us as players. Um, and like that type of vibe. I'm not going to spoil it if you haven't watched the episode. Um, but it was awful, uh, and other modules that they put out recently, um, this, this is a real throwback and is much more vanilla. So it gives me a lot more, like I can throw in things like, like unconscious training montages for Sindri or Carmilla's nightmares or lyrics. What the fuck is happening? I'm sure it's fine. It's just, you know, night terror. Just night, night terrors while you're awake. But it was night. Was it really? It, it was night. Was I awake? They come at night. Hmm. All right. So you, they devour. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, dirty. Um, all right. So some questions from the chat we have right now. What are the differences I've noticed in chapters one and two between uh, Shattered, Obelisk, and Lost Mines? Um, uh, the, the the silver and the inclusion of funny-headed goblins. That That's literally the only difference. Uh, sometimes down to a, a a letter count on the page. It is no different. Like, it is just, like, copy replace. Um, Kelly and the players, what was your favorite part of Fandelver so far? What surprised you the most? Favorite part of Fandelver so far? Huh. Um, I will say the, honestly, party dynamics and role play, which is... Yeah, you guys have been real solid. Um, Because we have distinct, in many ways, very distinctly different sent like moral compasses but also are still on the same general per compass mm. and i think that's neat but that's more us than the actual um although i do think the setting kind of helps us navigate that because some wants to go beat up the the ruffians and then sindri doesn't want to cause trouble for the inn we're staying at and then yeah, I think that it's kind of, there are some pieces to sort of figure out and navigate, work with on that. Hmm. Okay. I think my favorite part is how many, like, bandits you've managed to reform through motivational speeches and nice actions. That's so dumb that I love it. It's just, like, I don't, I don't, I don't get how you are the, the good influence in these people's lives that quickly but all right it's great and most surprised was probably accidentally killing Sindri. i was very surprised that i just, I'm like oops and like he's not an easy like despite how much like i've been absolutely burked i think a lot of it's crits that i well, that up, was like, a crit that did it yeah yeah because like i have like i've seen with armor class 17 at level one which is like not nothing to sneeze it's like nothing to sneeze at like mm. But it is just like when you get when you get nailed, you get nailed, right? Like it's like good luck, and you have nine hit points. And also, yes, I'm looking into the camera at all of you directly. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. When you get but, nailed, you get nailed. It's just it's just you get nailed, you get nailed. Um, but but enough about Carmilla. <laughs> Havla. Use that smite, baby. It's uh, snaked. Staked. Get staked. I'm not going to say anything. Um, so uh, anybody else have a big shout out for this chapter or the game so far that they yeah. really want to say? Honestly, it's not really necessarily the the chapter itself, but our running of the game. I really am enjoying our, our RP. And mm. I think one of the things I'm loving is how everybody's ha- been kind of reluctant to stop calling her Lady Alessandra. And when... 
inviting Anthea. She's like, oh no, that's okay. I'm like, okay, Caitlin. <laughs> I won't do that. But um, I think most surprising was definitely episode one, all of a sudden having like a star-crossed lovers romance start generating. <laughs> I was like, it's incredible. I wasn't I expecting that, but okay, it's happening. <laughs> Especially because, like, when we were building our characters, Kelly was very much like, like, are you sure that you're both okay taking the noble background? You're kind of building these characters that are kind of similar in, like, background and sense. And we are like, oh, well, no, but, like, we're doing it, but in a way we're both so opposite. Like, yeah, yeah, we both come from this kind of similar background, but it's so vastly different that we'll, it'll be fine. But then, of course, like, nothing brings that about other, like, more than opposite right or the opposite yeah. so yeah. yeah i'm pretty sure in our actually you no know, it was a in that moment when we were doing the very first fight in the first game um all that kind of like slightly flusteredness between the two characters i was then messaging krista in facebook messenger going hey so this is what i'm seeing do you want to do this <laughs> And it's so this good could and it, fun. it could be very funny <laughs> and it's so funny because it's coming from like both of them being so awkward because from their different backgrounds of just not yep. having a lot of socializing uh, yeah it was it was very very good i thought that was delightful, <laughs> it was very delightful. On, on on the other on the sort of flip side of these two incredibly awkward characters i also really i appreciate anthea's entirely singular amazing just like innocence but also just like it, it all it all comes down to the sh just let it happen it's just like <laughs> that it's so perfect um and then and then you have of these two like world traveled like very sociable very knowledgeable people just going oh my fucking god how did i get here and it's so good <laughs> wait who are the the world travel you and knowledgeable you <laughs> oh well yeah. see, i was kind of seeing it a bit as like alessandra and carmel are kind of on one edge of awkward yes and thea and lyric are kind of on a on the more other <laughs> side of awkward and then sindri's just kind of stuck in the middle being the normal person <laughs> he's just jim from the office thing so yeah much. pretty much yeah so it, it very much is the do you not have friends like is this like <laughs> well, can you define how what would count as a friend yeah. and none of us had friends, friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like truly to me like it's i think i've probably talked to you about you before um D, D is about friend like the way i play it it like it really is about friendships and the friendships you make along the way as like like as kind of hokey as that is but it's like these people are not are going to be your friends or enemies, but like we're <laughs> getting closer and closer into being like, oh yeah, okay, cool. We're just all gonna hang out together all the time. It's just it's cute. It's very cute. Anybody else got anything yeah. else they want to call out about things that jumped out at them or that surprised them? Amy. The only thing I just thought of was just like first time having an actual like backstory that really applies to the character a lot. Mm-hmm. It wasn't planned. It just happened. Yeah, in a module particularly. Like, it's harder to do that in a module. Like, in a home game, like, we've had characters, like, in your uh, your Reign of Emery's character having, like, this big backstory. Is, it's, like, one thing. But with a module, it's a little harder to shoehorn that in. It takes a little well, bit of extra work. Even the Reign of Emery's, I feel like you came up with most of that. Whereas this one, I keep throwing shit in as I come up with it and think about it and go, oh, yeah, let's, like, twist the knife a little harder on her. How much shittier of a background could she have? I, I have discovered, while still being good yes <laughs> I have discovered that that is it's the most character backstory comes up when you're twisting the knife like I I normally when I play D like up until the last I don't know two or three years my characters were never tra like I never played tragic emo tough characters that had a hard life you know they always had both parents alive they always just because I wanted to you know buck the trend um because I'm that guy uh <laughs> and uh but it I'm finding that I, I never had backstory before I was like yeah whatever they were happy it's fine but when you when you're like you come up with all this stuff like oh wouldn't it be worse if when you don't <laughs> that's have where a, all the backstory I like comes that it's from. not traditional tragic yeah. backstory either is what yes. i've ended up doing it's rich kid neglect and you can background you can get, 
and you can get so much out of that, right? So like when you're when you're designing things for your game and your or your characters, don't assume that it has to be ah, dragon ate my village, right? You can do like the neglect thing in Strixhaven. I'm playing a character whose life is great, but he's got daddy issues. And he's getting over them slowly, but it makes him be incredibly flawed. And like everything here, like everybody's got, I'm, I'm sure there's some other parental issues in this game. It's parental issues, the game, isn't it? <laughs> I'm looking around. I think Sindri's the only one I don't know much about, about his parents. I mean, everybody. his mom's on a boat somewhere. That's fine. Like <laughs> with T-Pain. T-Pain. Like I'm on a, oh, wow. Oh, Jurassic God. Pain. Ah, ah, the sign vortex. It's calling me. <laughs> <laughs> a village ate my dragon Ooh, that sounds like an isekai anime that i should probably watch um, uh, that's my next backstory excellent that's my next, that's my next, you're a dragonborn no, no yeah no just another like i'm a sorcerer because my village ate a dragon over the winter it was a very bad idea it was it was a gold dragon so it offered up for the for the town you could also get the the dragon background sorcerer then yeah, yeah. from eating it or you could just be allergic to it. Just terrifying. Come back wild as a reborn. Magic. Yep. Um, all right. Now, if you're allergic to it, that's how you become a wild magic sorcerer. Or or a reborn, yeah. <laughs> I died from anaphylactic dragon shock and came back as a... That's the beginning of... Uh, that's a light novel right there. Only need another sentence or two and we got a title. Or a Panic of the Disco song. A Panic of the Disco song. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. They're gone. Uh, rip. Fallout Boy killed them. <laughs> uh so uh and then the last question we have is from diggy blog were there any moments that you felt frustrated by and would change uh we'll, we'll add the addendum that we're not based on dice rolls hmm Christ, christa's hand slowly goes down <laughs> uh not i mean I would have redone a few things as DM, but that's that's just me. I would have done things to make the side quest more smooth, but yeah. Um, not Death of Curd. Death of Curd was great. Death of Curd is backstory for someone else. Amy. I would have not used the word escarpment where they did. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I never forgot about the escarpment. The escarpment. Google escarpment. Tell escarpment me how big you think an escarpment is and then Google it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we weren't supposed to climb it. Maybe you're we supposed, to climb, supposed to climb it. But okay. uh, didn't it have like stairs or like a ladder or it's something like on feet. one side? It's like 10 feet. Can like, we like, like... Add, it, add it in like a, a scarbon counter and then uh, a crenellation counter? Because it's crenellation is not so bad in this one, but in other modules, it's just everywhere. Oh, God. Crenellation. Yeah. I didn't even hear and that then... one. There's uh, there's another counter for Baldur's Gate three, which is the um, the the Baldur's Gate citizen saying the word ten day counter and it's like oh i hate it i hate it so much <laughs> just it's say a, a week <laughs> just say a week it's a 10 day it's a 10 day it's world building chris it's world building it's there's world no building. part of like i don't even i think, think that's based on historical week. stuff though of a seven day or a send day um because that's how they used to say week mm. and that's why you have Fortnite, yeah, which is the word two weeks week Hold on. Oh, All right, you get on the etymology linguist. Um, what else? What else bugs me about that? Like, there's that. There's ten day. I think that's one of the reasons why, like, for for our homebrew stuff, I've never come up with months and months and days, because it just feels like nobody would use them anyway. Ah, yeah. yes, this is this is this is Vela day, and tomorrow's Nern day. I mean, when yeah. you have an already set up set of time markers that you use culturally and regularly yeah. in your everyday life it's really hard to memorize a new set yeah. and when you, you do know? that you're there people are going to ask you over and over and over and over again what, was what does what that mean that? what does the that mean so especially since week apparently seems to come from um old germanic meaning sequence or series that makes sense the um the only one i remember from pathfinder is callist it's the month that's based off of Callistria, the goddess of elves, wasps, and sex workers. Because it's it's set during February, which means that it's set during Valentine's Day, and it's all about sex and revenge. And I'm like, done, <laughs> done. Callistria. Big mood. That big big mood. mood. And it's my See, birthday month, so it's all just like four things I remember. 
<laughs> right? It does make sense if if you have a world where you have like where the gods are very very important to your world. It makes sense that all of your time because that's like ours, right? Like Thor's day, right? And like you know, all of our months are based on you know March being based on Mars. Like yeah, so it. Yeah. I, I get a, it, but who's gonna remember that? <laughs> there's a meme about that that's going around that's like talking about how oh I hate how October is the tenth month when it's supposed to be the eighth month. I hope whoever did that gets stabbed. And it's like good news. And it's like, no, no, it's not good news because Augustus is the one that changed it, not Julius Caesar. God damn it. And it 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 just it sends me every time into like a blind rage. We should run around for Rome Rome again. Naming conventions. We should run around for Rome again. <laughs> I mean, I just I just put it out like I just wrote a bunch of stuff for Requiem Rome. There's an entire chapter where you have to rescue a ghouled pig who was named Emperor. What? 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 Yeah, there's an entire adventure portion where. Uh, sorry, this is gonna. There, there's this portion in a, in this Rome book that I that I wrote for where I wrote a chapter where the entire thing is that they're like, ah, oh, yes. We're going to make fun of the the current emperor of Rome by taking one of uh, one of his distant descendants, a human, feeding him a bunch of vampire blood, and being like, "Look, this is our emperor of the under Rome," and then a bunch of neonates go, "If you can put livestock on the throne, so can we." Well, here's ours, and they ghoul a pig, <laughs> and and the the elders instead of like just what? killing them or the pig, decide that they're like, "Fine." We'll keep this joke going to prove that we're cool and with it in like a very boomerish way. But then there's a big riot. And part of the mission is that you you are loyalists to this pig who basically treat him as your mascot. And you're trying to get him out of Rome before he gets murdered. What the shit? Yeah, this, this is the kind of stuff like I write. Call it, like, they're, okay, they're all in togas and they're rescuing. Yeah, 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 yeah you, <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Animal House with vampires. It's Animal House. It's Animal. Well, and the the whole joke about it is, if you he survives, if you manage to get him on a boat, he uh, ends up breeding and creating a bunch of super pigs in Northern Gaul that <laughs> <It> terrorizes <laughs> future campaigns. It's so good. Buy the book, guys. It's great. It's great. Oh, and man, I was be... I swore that my editor, like Sam, the guy who edited and dev the book, was going to cancel that. Like, I thought he was going to take it out of the book, but he did more than that. He made a Roman coin icon for the pig. It's in the book. And the best part is his name is Publius Porcus. Oh, por sorry, Publius Porcinius, because it's correct Latin. God buy, damn buy it. My, buy my book. <laughs> Can we make that as a coin? Can we actually... I think Do you want to see the coin? I'll show coin. you. I'll show you in a yeah. bit. All right, sounds good. Uh, all right, so uh, is there last thing, last thoughts about uh, chapters uh, one and two of uh, Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk? Any last thoughts? I hope you're enjoying it, everybody. I hope you're enjoying it who are watching it. And if you're running it, ask what your players want. That's the easiest way to give them what they want. And players, cut your DM some slack and tell them what you want. Like, and if you don't know what you want, just be flexible. Remember, you can always work stuff in after the fact. But my secrets. Oh, God. Um, and also just... I have a bone to pick with the name. Escarpment? No, the length of it and where the colon goes and, and how clear that is in... in There's not even a colon on this, actually. I put the colon in to differentiate it. But if you go online, they shove it in after the Fendelver and below. Like it's after the below. Yeah, you'd think but so. But that's right? only on digital media. If you're actually looking at the at like the logo, yeah, where's, yeah, where's it go? Anywhere, anywhere. Just apply it to wherever you want. It's it's just it's a title, man. Like what do we say that it's 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 Papso? Papso. Papso. Pan Fandelver like and beer? below. Paps? Yeah, pap Papso. Pabs. Papso. Oh, guys, yeah. Pat would switch around. I wanted it to be Patibo, but but the, the wording was slightly off. It makes things like Dragonlance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen, much easier to do, or Planescape, Turn of Fortune's Wheel. It's a little wordy, but it makes sense toward the end, like the book. It makes sense. Um, I'm hoping that some of their other ones don't have quite as much of a mouthful in the future. 
But speaking of a mouthful, uh, let me just say that it has been a pleasure to be here with you. But hey, I also want to say before we go, a big thank you to everybody who watched this game, who came and hung out with us. Uh, but I also need to say a big thank you to our sponsor for the night, and that is Bookworm Games, where if you want a mouthful, might I suggest picking up a mouthful of delicious bookworm tea with new Black Forest flavor. You can also get some edible dice, and you can get dice that you can put in your mouth, but I wouldn't suggest it. Uh, Bookworm is a fantastic dice proprietor out of the Vancouver area that provides you with more than 170 different dice options, from wooden to resin to acrylic to gemstone to liquid core, like the one Chris is holding up right now, to edible dice. You can also get dice bags, familiars, dice bins, and soon, tables. That's right, tables. You go to Bookworm Games right now and use code DORKTALES, all one word, to save 10% on your order. Also, they do uh, free shipping if you order more than 100 bucks, which, hey, the, the holidays are coming up. Dice are the gift that keeps on giving, uh, even if it kills people. Because it's still a, it's still a, it's, it's fun then. It's fun. But your Bookworm Dice wouldn't do that. They love you. Uh, big thank you to Bookworm Games for sponsoring us tonight. And, uh, folks, I think that's going to be it for us tonight. Um, it, we're going to do these throughout. I'm going to do these like every two chapters, probably, unless, uh, I'll probably do these every two chapters for the first four. And then we might do them every chapter for the last four, because the book's about twice as long in that section. So for the last half of the book, we'll probably do one for each one of these. Uh, if you have any questions for future episodes, please post them in the comments below. And thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, anybody have any last words? I've been having a lot of fun. Thanks for running. I've had a lot of fun too. Yeah. yeah. It's a good game. Uh, yeah. So we'll be back Stoned. next. Yeah. We'll be back next Monday as normal with a uh, with a normal game. Uh, and then uh, don't forget to come out this week. Uh, tomorrow is the Shards of Nern uh, at 7 p.m. Pacific. Wednesday is Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen. The the fight against Lord Soth is this week. So please come and support them for Soth Bowl 2023. Um as we find out, because they're going to try to fight him. Oh boy! I hope you didn't like the cast. Um, and then on Thursday is the finale of The World Below. So come out and uh, spend some time with us, folks. It'll be great to see you. And if you're watching on YouTube, consider giving us a sub. If you're watching on Twitch, give us a follow. And if you're listening on podcast later, what are you, what are you doing? Give us a follow, man. Like, give us a five-star review. Do it. Um... And the last thing I have to say is I've been noticing a lot, a big uptick over on our Patreon. A lot of people are signing up for that recently because I've changed when we do our calls to action on that. That means, folks, if you got a couple of ex extra bucks in your pocket, consider joining the Patreon. You get a ton of additional games. Uh, we didn't end up having Radiant Citadel last week, but we did get out um, a Technocracy game. Uh, also, Star Trek ran today. There's also more Strixhaven coming next month, and then more Strixhaven coming the month after that. And uh, when Strixhaven ends, we've got some stuff to... Uh, to to swap over uh in its place potentially but that's something that we'll have to talk about later and krista is going to have to not join that game which i think we're going to have to fight you off with a stick from not joining that game to be honest knowing what it might be uh but we'll talk about that later so consider joining our our uh our, our, our patreon and uh, we'll see you next time here on Vandelver and below the shattered obelisk on the escarpment good night <laughs>